Video games have come a long way in the past few decades. What began as simple tic-tac-toe and tennis games on basic oscilloscope and CRT displays in the 50s grew into the full-on, big-budget, massive, immersive gaming experiences we have now. It's safe to say that video games have evolved to become a very important part of our modern culture. So today we'll be talking about one of the most significant gaming consoles ever to be released, which changed the landscape of gaming in the 80s and influenced games forever, spawning many franchises that are still currently going strong. Keep in mind this list is based entirely on my opinion and exposure, and I know for sure my top picks are going to surprise you, so I would love to hear your favorites and feedback in the comments. Also, do me a favor and like and subscribe while you're down there. So dust off the old system, blow into the cartridge a few times, and jiggle the reset button as we boot up my top 25 Nintendo Entertainment System games. Number 25, Pro Wrestling. This very basic wrestling title wasn't tied to any actual franchises and is mostly memorable for weird characters like the Amazon and Starman. It also gave us the horrible English meme, a winner is you. Number 24, Ice Hockey. Back before hockey games had spreadsheets worth of stats or licensing rights to national leagues and players, this basic hockey game offered the choice between fat and skinny characters, as well as a solid two-player experience. Number 23, Excite Bike. An action-packed motocross game, Excite Bike was a fun and challenging play on its own, but the track editor really added some depth as well as many hours of replayability. Number 22, Paperboy. So, the concept of playing a paper delivery boy sounds kinda lame, but keep in mind everyone and everything in the neighborhood seems to want to kill you for some reason. Maybe it's because you keep smashing their windows. Number 21, Tetris. Tetris. You know, Tetris. Insert joke about Soviet Russia here. Number 20, Maniac Mansion. This LucasArts point-and-click adventure title ported over well to the NES. Following a group of teens who infiltrate a mad scientist lair to save a kidnapped friend, highlights of this game are the several possible endings as well as the ability to microwave a hamster. Number 19, Bart vs. the Space Mutants. We follow the 90s era Bart Simpson as he stumbles upon an alien plot to infiltrate Springfield. There are other Simpsons games for the console, Krusty's Funhouse isn't that bad either. Number 18, Jaws. Based on the Steven Spielberg film, you set out to kill the man-eating shark, which mostly involves grinding for seashells by killing random aquatic creatures. I don't know why, but I get an odd level of satisfaction from bombing jellyfish. Number 17, A Nightmare on Elm Street. Based on the Wes Craven film, this game allows up to four players a chance to take on the King of Nightmares himself, Freddy Krueger. Moving the players between the real world, the dream world, and the nightmare realm with the unique sleep meter mechanic, this was one of the more chilling experiences on the console. Number 16, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. The original, though the sequels were solid ports of arcade classics, nothing beats the original game that allowed us to run around in the sewers while playing our favorite turtles, cruise around in the turtle van, and face off against the Technodrome. Number 15, Contra. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA start is a code ingrained in many gamers' memories because of this game. You play as a pair of one-hit death commandos who blast their way through a bullet hell of hostile militaries, artillery, advanced AI robots, giants, and aliens. Good luck doing that with the three lives that the game starts you with. Number 14, Battletoads. We play as the Battletoads Rash and Zits on a mission to rescue their fellow Battletoad Pimple. It's a fun arcade style beat em up. If nothing else, this game mastered the concept of screwing over the second player. Number 13, Chippendale Rescue Rangers. Speaking of games in which you can screw over the second player, this game allows you to straight up pick up the other player and throw them across the screen. Other than that, like other Disney licensed games of this era, this one is pretty fun. Speaking of Disney licensed games. Number 12, DuckTales. Based on the television series, you play as Scrooge McDuck as he continues his quest to satisfy his greed while also rescuing his nephews, maybe. That part is optional. Number 11, Final Fantasy. This solid first entry into a still popular franchise gave us an epic quest full of puzzles and surprises. While it clearly lacks the level of polish people have come to expect from the franchise nowadays, this game planted the seeds for what would become a gaming behemoth. Number 10, Dragon Warrior. Another solid first entry in a long-running JRPG series, Dragon Warrior eventually became Dragon Quest here in North America, and the franchise still continues strong. Number 9, Double Dragon. Thugs kidnap your girlfriend, so you go on a rampage, destroying everything that gets in your way. I don't want to spoil too much, but this is the game where the second player gets justice for what happened back in Battletoads and Rescue Rangers. Number 8, Castlevania. You play as Simon Belmont, a badass vampire slayer who's on a mission to slay the lead vampire Dracula. Of course, it can't be that simple, so Dracula's castle is populated with all manner of undead creatures and, for some reason, turkey in the walls. Number 7, Metroid. 
You're a badass in a spacesuit that landed down in a labyrinth-like cavern that eventually leads to the source of an alien infestation. Having one of the more shocking twist endings in gaming at the time, Metroid has since become one of Nintendo's flagship properties. Number 6. Mega Man 3 Mega Man was a huge franchise for the NES. It had a bunch of sequels, all of which are great and have amazing soundtracks, but if I had to pick just one for this list, it would be Mega Man 3. It's the one that introduced the power slide, and the one that I personally spent the most time with. Number 5. Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. To clarify, there's Punch-Out, and then there's Mike Tyson's Punch-Out. Basically they're the same game, but one has Mike Tyson and one doesn't. There were some contract issues or something which led to the sequel Power Punch 2, where not Mike Tyson goes to space and beats up aliens. Good times. Number 4. Super Mario Bros. 3. I probably don't need to justify having this one on the list at all. In fact, I'm sure some of you are shocked that this franchise isn't taking up a higher slot. The third entry in the franchise perfected the Mario formula, and I'm sure it lands at number one in many other people's lists. Number 3. Blaster Master. I'll admit there's likely a bit of personal bias and nostalgia at play here, but Blaster Master is one of the best soundtracks on the NES, and some really solid gameplay mixed with a simple and effective plot. It's one of my personal favorite games of all time. Number 2. The Legend of Zelda. Another one I don't really need to justify, I mean, it's Zelda. The original stands the test of time as a solid adventure game that innovated the way that we quest and went on to become one of the biggest gaming franchises of all time. Number 1. Star Tropics. I'm not even sure if most of you have even heard of Star Tropics, but it's this really unique action RPG about a young boy named Mike who, while visiting his uncle on the fictional tropical sea island, stumbles upon an alien invasion. Armed with his trusty yo-yo, Mike is tasked to save the world. This game offers an amazing soundtrack and plot, and the unique gameplay makes this game stand out above all others. Those are my top 25 NES games of all time. I'm sure your list will be different, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. Once again, this was Fade Dragon Tear. Thanks for watching, guys. Peace out.